wasn't actually going to do this as a video. I have to make two pillows as big as I can and I had two pieces this size and then I cut the next sizes which ended up being slightly smaller. This has a corner out of it but I managed to find a piece of fabric that can go at the bottom. Now I have the piping cut out and I'm going to put a zip in along the bottom here. So I'll show you how it's done. I made my piping up the same as usual, one and a half inches. I actually sewed it this way across instead of the other way because I wanted to follow the stripe. And I'm going to sew that in half an inch, seam allowance as I always do. I've already cut in for the corner to go around. Hold that up and then carry on. My machine really doesn't like this fabric very much. When I do my cushions like this, this is a border. I usually cut it between two and a half to three inches wide. I'm going to come in about an inch from the end and fold that over. Once I've worked out where my end is and how much I'm going to fold over, I'm going to cut in at an angle like this. Fold that over and leave that piece up. So that goes over about half an inch. Over sew that into place. This is the stopper so that the zip cannot fall off the back end of here. So I've got a plain foot on. I'm just going to sew over the end there. And reverse. Now I'm going to hold it steady while I change the foot over and I'll put the zipper foot in. Just try not to wriggle the fabric around too much underneath because you don't want the thread to go too long. Drop that down, I'll turn it all. Now, I'm going to just fold this over so there's a hem there. So I've moved the zipper back here, folded over the length of fabric into line and I've lined up all the stripes. In some ways it's awkward doing it this way up because you're really relying on where the zipper teeth are. You don't want to go over those. And I'm going to go to the end. There's my zip held into place. I know the front is 10 and a half inches, so I'm going to measure to 10 and a half inches down here and just go straight across. It's easier to do it this way and have the back almost to the right size as the front rather than to sew it on and then cut it all back. Now this is down, it's got the thick line on that side, so that matches. I'm going to just flip that one over like that and sew it into place. Measure the top and bottom, make sure that they're equal and slide this underneath here and sew all the way around. Let's move that over one. I managed to catch it down, pop that into place. Looks like it's going to go under and down to the corner. Needle down and turn. Make sure that the bottom raw edges run together. As with any other cushion, just cut the corners back just a little bit. They don't have to go too close to the seam within quarter of an inch. Open the zip up and then turn it the right way around. Now, the reason why I put piping on is because I couldn't match the stripes at the front and the back. So by doing that, you kind of knock the eye and it doesn't see that they don't match because when you look at it from the front, that's all you're going to see is the piping at the top. In the front, they're matching. On the backs, they match top and bottom, but not to each other. And that's fine, nobody will ever notice. Great way of using up some leftover fabric. You could have them that way up if you wanted to have a little bit of interest or that way around if you just want it plain. And to be honest, you don't even have to have all of this in the same colour. You could have something else under there if you wanted to make a feature of the fact that you don't have matching fabric. But I think they'll be pleased with that. I think they look pretty good. They're a little bit bigger than a lumber pillow in height, but basically that's what they are. 